A person learns Photoshop the same way they eat an elephant, one bite at a time. So today we're going to take a couple nibbles and I'm going to show you the first couple things that you should start using Photoshop for. So one of the first things that got me editing in Photoshop was the cleanup tools. And we're going to show you a couple of those here. The ones in Lightroom are just terrible. They're really slow. They often yield really bad results, but the cleanup tools we have in Photoshop are so much better. So we're going to be round tripping these images from Lightroom to Photoshop and then saving in Photoshop going back into Lightroom. And I recommend doing these types of edits either at the very beginning of the workflow, right after you've dialed in your colors or completely at the end. Probably it's best if you do it at the end of your workflow. So here we have an image that I've just quickly edited inside of Lightroom. And so we'll say that this is done. Now we need to open this up over inside of Photoshop. We're going to do that by right clicking, go edit in, and then edit in Adobe Photoshop. Now normally I recommend that people open things up as a smart object in Photoshop, but in this particular case, there's not really a benefit to it because we're not going to be staying in Photoshop. We're not going to have to reaccess the raw file. We're not doing multiple steps here in Photoshop. We're just doing a single thing and saving and getting back into Lightroom. And that's the way I recommend you get started in Photoshop. You know, Lightroom's kind of your safe place where you're familiar with the software, you can do what you need to do, but there's that one thing you can't do inside of Lightroom. We're gonna do that in Photoshop, save, and then quickly go back into our safe place in Lightroom. So here we are inside of Photoshop. Now, if you look, zoom in here, you can see that I have a hair on my sensor, all kinds of, uh, sensor dust and that even looks like a bug or something. I've got tons of stuff to clean up here and Even though these are fairly simple things to clean up the tools in Lightroom are just slow and clunky and they're so much quicker and faster here in Photoshop So the first thing I recommend doing is just duplicating our background layer that way we can revert back if we make a mistake so I'm just going to grab this layer and then drag it down to this new layer icon and let go. And you see it's just made a copy of our background layer. So here on our tools menu, we have several different options here. So if I right click on what is currently the patch tool, we also have the spot healing brush, healing brush tool, content aware, move tool, red eye tool, which you'll never use. But I'm going to start off with just the spot healing brush tool. This is like the perfect tool for sensor dust and easy little things like that. So if I zoom in on our sensor dust here and then just click, you can see how almost instant that is. We can do it on this hair most likely. It's done a great job there. And I can just zoom in, go around, and you can see how quick this tool works. It's so much faster than Lightroom's spot healing brush tool. It is incredibly fast. And this is kind of, this represents the last stage of any edit that I do, just zooming in and getting rid of all of my sensor dust. One of the unfortunate things about shooting mirrorless, especially on the Sony system, is all the damn sensor dust. So we're just going to zoom in and get rid of that sensor dust. And I'm, all I'm doing is just clicking, moving, or moving it around a little bit. I can just do a single click and... There we go. And when I turn this layer off and on, uh, let's get a couple more here. When I turn this layer off and on, before, after, before, after, you can see you've done a good job, no artifacts, we're good to go. And at this point, if that's all the cleanup I had to do, I could go Control W, which is actually for close. And then it'll ask you, do you want to save your changes? I'll hit yes. It's going to save this file. And the benefit to hitting Control W for close rather than Control S for save is that as soon as this is done saving, it's going to close. And then we go back over into Lightroom. And right here in our Lightroom catalog, right next to the source file, will be our new cleaned up finished file. And then we're back into Lightroom and we're back in our safe place. So that is byte number one. Bite number two is what happens if we have a more extreme cleanup job. Obviously, we've got sensor dust and things like that in this image, but we've also got this these dark vignette corners where I was stacking filters and I ended up with a strong vignette. We could crop in a little bit 
on an image like this, but I'd rather not not because we can easily fix this inside of Photoshop. Can't do it in Lightroom. Let me show you how. Right click, edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so we have this open inside of Photoshop. Obviously, we have some really dark sensor dust. We've got a couple water droplets. We've got this strong vignette from my stacked filters, and we even have sensor dust in the rainbow. Stuff like that could be a pretty big issue, um, especially if you're trying to use the tools inside of Lightroom. So we can do just like we previously did, drag our layer down to the new layer tab, duplicate it. We can go through with our spot healing brush tool. Maybe we can do these water droplets and it'll do okay. We'll give it a try. And getting a little bit of issue with that. So we're going to avoid those water drops for now. We're just gonna get the sensor dust first. clean up the worst of the sensor dust. So one of the most powerful, cool tools inside of Photoshop is definitely the content aware fill. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to our lasso tool here, and we're gonna make a selection of this area, this dark corner that needs fixed. So once we have this active selection, after I let go, we get these marching ants, that tells me I have an active selection, and now we can right click and go down to content aware fill. So it's gonna bring up this workspace area here. So on the left, this is kind of what we're telling Photoshop to look at, because what Photoshop's gonna do is generate new pixels. It's going to fill based on content, right? And so on the left here, this is where we tell Photoshop where we want it to sample from to generate those pixels. And then here on the right is a preview of what it's going to do. So. The tool that we want to grab is this top one. This is a sampling brush tool. And we're going to basically tell Photoshop where to look to sample its pixels. So I want to have Photoshop look at the sky around this selected area. So I'll paint it green and then let go. And then over here, we get this preview and you can see that the preview looks really good. Photoshop's content aware fill is pretty surprising in how good it is sometimes. So once we're done, we're gonna hit okay. And then it's gonna give us a new layer here. And on this new layer is that little bit of sky that it's generated. And you can see that that looks very good. So we'll do the same thing over on this side. We'll select the background copy. We'll make a selection with the lasso tool. We'll right click, go content aware fill. We'll do the same thing. We've got the sampling brush tool selected paint around that selection, look at our preview, it looks good, we'll hit OK. Another little tool that we have at our disposal, if we right click on our spot healing brush tool, we have the patch tool. So the cool thing about the patch tool is that we can tell Photoshop where it's going to sample from, kind of like we did in the content aware fill, only it's much faster. So it can draw around our sensor dust and then we can drag this down Make sure that we're on our background copy. Then we can drag this down to a part of the rainbow that should be the exact same shade. So obviously we don't want it sampling from the blue part of the rainbow. We want it sampling from the orange part. So I'll just drag it down here and let go. And you can see it's done a perfect job at getting rid of that sensor dust. We can do a very similar thing here with these big water droplets because they're larger. We need to make a larger selection. And then we can drag it down to or over to a part of the sky that looks very similar to what's already there. That looks good. Make a sample, make a selection of that. Drag it over to say here, let go. That looks good. And we'll do that for all of our big water droplets. Like so. The cleanup tools in Photoshop, they're not only better, but they're faster. So a lot of times just by doing this little bit, granted it takes me a while to talk my way through this, but when you're actually doing it, it's so much faster that it, you're actually saving time by round tripping over into Photoshop just so you can use the cleanup tools. And then of course, when you're done, you can hit Control or Command W. Do you wanna save? Yes, it's going to save it. It's going to go back into Lightroom right next to the file that it came from inside of your Lightroom catalog. So it's right there and easily findable.
So the other little bite that I want to show you guys today is focus stacking. I know I have a video about this, but I want to kind of hammer it home because it's one of those things that you can't do inside of Lightroom, but will dramatically increase the, the quality of your images. So an image like this, it's obviously a sunrise image, but to me, a really important part of the image was all of the dew that was on this wheat and the way it was backlit and they were all kind of cool and prismatic, but I could not even stop down to F16. I could not get enough sharpness to keep the keep it all in focus. So what I did was I shot three different images and focused at different parts of the frame. That way I could have perfect sharpness from front to back. So the first thing we're going to do is hold down shift, click on all three of these images, and then I'm going to hit the sync button because I want to make sure that whatever edits I did to the, um, to the first image, I want those done identically through all three of them. That way the exposure is the same, contrast is the same. And when we blend the different planes of focus together, it's, there's not going to be any you know, transition areas. It's all the same. So next step is with all three of these selected, we're going to right click, go edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. That's going to open all of these images into the same file on top of one another as layers. Again, I have another video on this. I'll put a link up here or in the description below. Um, but focus stacking is one of those things that dramatically increases image quality. It's something you can't do in camera, can't do inside of Lightroom, and it's not hard. I'll show you. So now we have all three of these open. We're going to hold down shift, click on the bottom one. So we have all three of these layers selected. We're going to go up to edit, auto align layers. And then once it aligns these and it, and it fixes the focus breathing that happens when you change your area of focus. Now we have all three of these lined up just to be safe. I want to put them inside of a folder so I could do that by just dragging it down to the folder icon. And then I want to duplicate this folder because just in case Photoshop screws it up, I want to have a backup copy because it, you can't really undo all the things it's about to do. So it's nice to have that backup copy. So to have this backup copy, I'm just going to drag this folder down to the new layer icon. And now we have two groups, two folders, both with all three of these images inside. So now we're going to grab these three images, hold down shift and select them all and go up to edit auto blend layers. So now that they're aligned and we've taken care of the focus breathing, now we're going to have them blended. And it, what Photoshop's going to do at this stage is look at through all the pixels and then only use the sharpest pixels from each one. And the final result is going to be taking the focused areas from each image and blending it into a single layer, which is done right here. And now we have dew drops nice and sharp in the foreground, but we also have the background perfectly in focus. Something that we could not have done in camera, could not have done inside of Lightroom. And now at this point, we could hit Control or Command W, which is going to close it asks if we want to save, we save it and it ends up back over in Lightroom right where it started. So I totally understand in the beginning, Photoshop is intimidating and it almost seems like it's intentionally intimidating. It's not laid out in a very intuitive way, but the way you learn these things is just one little bit at a time. You take that tool, you put it in your toolbox and you've got put it next to your other two tools and eventually, you know, you keep putting a tool in the toolbox, you have a whole bunch of tools. And then you find that you don't have to edit inside of Lightroom anymore. You can edit inside of Photoshop. But in the beginning, you go, you do that thing inside of Photoshop that you can't do inside of Lightroom and then save it, go back into Lightroom. And you have those couple tools that you can refer to in future images. Hopefully this helps. Hopefully this saves you guys some time and gets those first bites of the elephant out of the way. Take it easy, everybody. We'll catch you later.